The Weber test and the Rene test are both clinical examination techniques that use a tuning fork to help determine the likely cause of a patient's hearing loss. Let's discuss how the Weber test and the Rene test are performed and discuss how to interpret the findings of both of these tuning fork tests. In the next video, we will go through some worked examples to help apply the information you will learn from this video. Remember, there are two different types of hearing loss. There is conductive hearing loss and there is sensory neural hearing loss. Conductive hearing loss refers to a disability of the external or middle ear to transmit sound waves, whereas sensory neural hearing loss refers to disability of the inner ear to transduce sound waves to the brain. So again, conductive hearing loss is generally referring to a problem within the external or middle ear, whereas sensory neural hearing loss is referring to a problem within the inner ear. Let's talk through how each of the tuning fork tests are performed, starting with the Weber test. To perform the Weber test, the first step is to strike the prongs of the tuning fork against a hard surface, and then place the base of the vibrating tuning fork in the middle of the patient's forehead, and finally, ask the patient where the sound is heard. The findings of the Weber test depends on where the sound was heard best. If there is no lateralization, in other words, the patient heard the sound best in the middle of the forehead, this can either mean two things. Most commonly, this means that the patient has normal hearing. So again, a patient who has normal hearing will have no lateralization on the Weber test. However, if there is no lateralization on the Weber test, this could also indicate symmetric hearing loss. So there is hearing loss symmetrically in both ears. On the other hand, let's consider if there is lateralization. So in other words, the patient heard the sound louder in a particular ear. If there is lateralization, this indicates asymmetric hearing loss. In terms of this asymmetric hearing loss, the direction of lateralization can give us useful information to determine if the hearing loss is conductive in nature or sensory neural in nature. The key things to note with this lateralization is that sound lateralizes towards the ear with conductive hearing loss and also sound lateralizes away from the ear with sensory neural hearing loss. So again, sound lateralizes towards the ear with conductive hearing loss, but it will lateralize away from the ear with sensory neural hearing loss. This is very important to remember. Let's put these principles into practice. Here's a schematic representation of the Weber test. We are looking at a patient from the top, so this is the right ear, and this is the left ear. Here we have the tuning fork, which is placed on the middle of the patient's forehead. Let's consider a patient who has normal hearing. The sound waves that are transmitted by the vibrating tuning fork in a patient with normal hearing will not lateralize. It will stay in the midline. So in a patient with normal hearing, the sound will not lateralize. Let's now consider a scenario where the Weber test is performed and the sound waves that are transmitted from the vibrating tuning fork is lateralizing to the right ear. So again, in this scenario, the sound has lateralized to the right ear. So remember, lateralization in the Weber test indicates asymmetric hearing loss. To determine the type of hearing loss, we need to remember the key principles. Remember, sound lateralizes towards the ear with conductive hearing loss, and sound lateralizes away from the ear with sensory neural hearing loss. So in this scenario, the sound has lateralized to the right ear. So in terms of the findings of the Weber test, this either indicates that the patient has conductive hearing loss in the right ear because the sound has lateralized towards the right ear, or it could indicate sensory neural hearing loss in the left ear because the sound has lateralized away from the left ear. This is what the Weber test tells us in this patient. Let's now consider another scenario. In this scenario, the Weber test is performed and the sound waves transmitted by the vibrating tuning fork lateralizes to the left ear. Again, remember the principles. Sound lateralizes towards the ear with conductive hearing loss and sound lateralizes away from the ear with sensory neural hearing loss. So in this patient, the Weber test tells us the patient either has conductive hearing loss in the left ear because the sound has lateralized towards the left ear or that the patient has sensory neural hearing loss in the right ear 
because the sound has lateralized away from the right ear. Hopefully you are now clear on the principles of the Weber test. Let's now discuss how to perform the Rene test. The first step is to strike the prongs of the tuning fork against the hard surface and then place the base of the vibrating tuning fork on the mastoid bone behind the ear. Then place the still vibrating fork whilst holding the base of the tuning fork over the outer ear. And finally, ask the patient if the sound was louder in front of the ear or behind the ear. To understand the findings of the Rini test, it's important to understand some key terminology including air conduction and bone conduction, which will be abbreviated as AC and BC. Air conduction refers to sound that is transmitted through air. So in the Rini test, when the vibrating fork is placed over the ear, the sound that travels through the ear canal is traveling by air conduction. Bone conduction, on the other hand, is referring to sound that travels through the bone. So in the Rini test, when the vibrating fork is placed over the mastoid bone, the sound that travels through the bone is traveling by bone conduction. In normal hearing, air conduction is greater than bone conduction. So again, in a patient with normal hearing, air conduction is greater than bone conduction. This is referred to as Rini positive, which can be confusing. So again, a Rini positive test indicates that air conduction is greater than bone conduction, which is typical in patients with normal hearing. In patients with conductive hearing loss, sound will have a difficult time traveling through the ear canal, and this will mean that bone conduction will be greater than air conduction. This is referred to as Rini negative. So again, a Rini negative test indicates that bone conduction is greater than air conduction, and this is typically seen in patients with conductive hearing loss. In patients with sensory neural hearing loss, air conduction is greater than bone conduction. And again, this is referred to as Rini positive. So a Rini positive test refers to air conduction greater than bone conduction, and it is seen in both patients with normal hearing and patients with sensory neural hearing loss. Let's come back to this schematic diagram, and now let's consider the Rini test. Let's first consider if the tuning fork is placed on the mastoid bone, behind the right ear. When the vibrating tuning fork is placed on the mastoid bone, the sound is traveling by bone conduction. Let's now consider when the vibrating tuning fork is placed over the right ear. The sound waves are now traveling by air conduction. If the sound is heard loudest when the vibrating tuning fork is placed over the ear compared to when the vibrating tuning fork is placed on the mastoid bone, then this indicates that air conduction is greater than bone conduction, and this is a Rini positive test. And remember, this either indicates the patient has normal hearing in the right ear, or has sensory neural hearing loss in the right ear. Let's now consider if the sound is heard loudest when the vibrating tuning fork is placed over the mastoid bone compared to when the vibrating tuning fork is placed over the right ear. So this would indicate that bone conduction is greater than air conduction, and so this is a Rini negative test. This indicates conductive hearing loss in the right ear, because bone conduction is greater than air conduction in the right ear. Let's now consider when the Rini test is performed on the left ear. When the vibrating tuning fork is placed on the mastoid bone, remember this is testing bone conduction, and remember when the vibrating tuning fork is placed over the left ear, this is testing air conduction. Again, let's consider if the patient hears the sound loudest when the vibrating tuning fork is placed over the left ear compared to when the vibrating tuning fork is placed over the mastoid bone. This indicates that air conduction is greater than bone conduction, which indicates a Rini positive test, and this either indicates normal hearing in the left ear or sensory neural hearing loss in the left ear. And finally, let's consider if the patient hears the sound loudest when the vibrating tuning fork is placed over the mastoid bone compared to when the vibrating tuning fork is placed over the left ear. So this would indicate that bone conduction is greater than air conduction, and this is a Rini negative test. So this indicates conductive hearing loss in the left ear because bone conduction is greater than air conduction in the left ear. So hopefully you are now clear on how to interpret the findings of the Rini test in both ears. In the next video, we will apply the knowledge learned from this video to different cases with different findings in terms of the Weber and Rini test.